Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Virtual Riot and I am at the Cymatics office right now and we're gonna make a little track from scratch. <sighs> okay, how to start though. So I have a little pattern idea in my head that um, I wanna realize. So first of all, um, I think it's a good idea to have something in your head before you just go in. I like sound design sessions where you just go out into the blue and you just start making a patch and eventually that'll trigger a song idea but I wanna start with like a little bit of a plan. So the plan is to have a trappy beat at 160 and um, something like da, 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 tsh, tsh, bah, just like that, that's like super basic and then on the sustain, bah, we're gonna have a quarter note little yoink on top and that's everything. So that's like the basic outline but then I guess once we're gonna make the sound, we'll see where it takes us. So let's, uh, let's start with the drums. Let's get some samples in here. So, um, I made some trappy kicks myself the other day. So we're just gonna use this trappy kick I made. And for the snare, since it's gonna be trappy, it pro should probably be something softer, not like a dubstepy <laughs> snare, but something more uh, fresh. Like something around that area. So this is, but that sounds like a soft clap layer. So we need, Oh, there we go, that's kind of cool. Oh, that's a company snare. Sweet, why not, hey. Support your homies. Okay, so easy trap beat. We're just gonna start with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Punch that in. Also, this is at 150, we need 160. And we need a sub. So for like trappy subs, I've literally just been taking a sine wave and distorting that thing in serum and then distorting that even further with a saturator of your choice. And there's this amazing plugin by Deviant, mm, is it Deviant Machines? Let me see, this thing called Texture right here. We talked about it in the podcast, I think, um, that adds noise, white noise or whatever noise you want or any sample to a sound depending on the input volume. So now it's adding white noise to my sub and I can filter it, so. I'm gonna get it up here and then distort the noise and the sub together in the saturator. So now we have a poop saw, as the professionals call it. <laughs> okay, I wanna take out like 300, 400 hertz because that's all the mud. So that's just gonna be a really obnoxious, annoying trap sub. Also, just to make it like a little more, I don't know, evil or something uh, and less perfect, I like to add a little pitch wobble so it like slowly drifts up and down ever so slightly around the root note at like, doesn't even have to be in sync or, or maybe on one bar. That's, that's already too much, just a little bit. Something like that. Okay. So we need this guy as soon as the second kick comes around. So we'll have to, uh, come on, from over here. So from here. So we make this an E. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start this in E. And then I'm gonna make a fresh patch for our yoinky sound. Okay, so I'm gonna just draw the MIDI first and then keep that on loop while I work on the patch. That's usually how I do that. That's a little easier. So we're in E, so I'm gonna draw one, two, three, four, dun, 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 and then a fill right there. So now I can just keep this little MIDI clip on loop. This gets annoying after a while, but this is a really easy way to work on this. So I'm just gonna do that and just disregard if this gets annoying after a while. <laughs> so actually this will work easiest with just a saw wave, I feel like. Um, I just want this to have like a sweep upwards. I might use sync just because, but way higher and also restart gate. More detuned. So this drifts apart really nicely. Important is here, and I keep telling this, but this is important. I think if you use multiple voices in Serum on an oscillator, it'll automatically spread them in the stereo image. So you wanna go on the global page and maybe turn this down, like the width here, if you wanna stay mono, especially with multiple voices, because now this is gonna be really anti-phase, like left and right. And if you played a sound like this on a club system that's 
only playing mids, you might not even hear the sound at all, or it'll be substantially more quiet and it can suck. I have had a time where I played somewhere in France and I played a new tune I made where I didn't take care of this and half of the basses in the drop were gone. Like you couldn't even hear them anymore. It was very strange. And then I learned about uh, face cancellation and then my life got a lot easier from there on, from there on out. Okay, so let's put some filters on this. to end up there, another LFO on the volume, trigger. Yeah, I just want like a little washy sweep noise. Add some white noise with the noise oscillator. Run this through the filter. Add hyper, add OTT, add distortion. And put this on like a lot of voices and a lot of detune. So this has zero tonality right now. So we can bring some in with uh, a positive comp filter that we link to the upward sweep LFO. So we get some of the upwards movement. Maybe link the volume envelope to the resonance. So yeah, we get some of that. And then for a metallic -y feel, add a tonal delay. So uh, actually I would do this inside Serum because here you can also use the filter of the delay to make it a little more flavorful. So suddenly you have this metallic tail, which is very nice and hybrid trap rid of me. And we can then automate the mix of the delay. So it's just in every once in a while or even just fade it in. Yeah, afterwards. So now it's like just bringing in the delay every time the sound actually goes quiet. So that's kind of cool. Um, so this sounds a little weak, but it's doing the right movement that I want. So now I'm gonna drop my little fat rack on it for saturation and enhancement. Ooh, this is actually the wrong one. I think this works too, but this one's a little too intense. I want the old one. This one's fine. Yeah, that's enough. This is also less intense on the CPU. Quack, quack, quack. Can we, can we distort this more? Maybe try the comms filter instead. Nice, okay, that's enough for now. And a fill before the kick comes in. Okay, now we can actually use a cool drum fill from the pack that we're gonna release soon. Um, the drum pack I made with Pat from Mode Step, so you can actually have a little sneak peek into it. We made a lot of drum fills, and most of them are at 150, so there's some really sweet ones, super clean and dry sounding in here. So these are at 150, but the tracks are 160. If you want to speed something up, Ableton has like loads of these different algorithms to do that, like the um, the tones mode, repitch, complex, complex pro. But if you want, if you have something like a drum fill, I recommend using repitch because it'll keep the quality of the sample the same and um, you won't have any aliasing issues or something. So what it does is it'll just increase the pitch a little bit because it has to make the sample faster, but it keeps the quality the same. So it'll st all the transients still snap the same. So that's super useful for, for drums. And uh, I can't recommend that enough. So we'll have... Oh wait, turn off the solo. Why is this not on time? <laughs> there we go. Oh, cause I didn't type in 150. I am so stupid. There we go. So that's our fill to the second kick drum when the sub hits. Dun, dun, dun. We could even just do three and then go from there and have another patch that just does a like a quarter note yoink over this. Since we already made a yoink, and I'm, a, I'm gonna improve this one a little bit. This one still sucks. So since this one doesn't have any sub, I'm gonna EQ all the sub out anyways. We can use a frequency shifter in the end to like pitch this guy up or down. So that's a little more interesting already. I like that. If, so what, why I'm saying that it's important that this thing doesn't have any sub for frequency shifting is because if you have a sub in here and you frequency shift it, this, this is gonna happen. Actually sounds kinda cool right now, but most of the time if it was a real like full on 
main base. As soon as your frequency shifted, your sub sign is slowly reaching 200 hertz, 300 hertz, and then it's, and it's gonna be incredibly loud, and that might ruin the sound once your frequency shifted up. So I like to frequency shift either with split frequency bands or cut the sub first. Actually, in this case, it's kind of cool because you can tune it to the key of the track. We can EQ it afterwards a little bit to bring it down, but it kind of sounds like something you would otherwise get through FM. So that's actually kind of cool, I like that. Um, the tail of the delay is a bit too long. That's better. Mm -hmm. Nah, that's fine, this can stay, this can all stay in place like this. Um, we could add some room. So what I like is for putting this in a room or adding some reverb, I like putting in the shortest possible reverb times. So it's just like a little single reflection and then either keeping it like this, so it's just that small room. Also great to add stereo width to a mono sound or if you want kind of like a delay, like an echo, you can use the pre-delay to just have one single reflection of the sound, like. So you have like this one echo and then you can time it to the speed of the track. So it's like in time or it's like a triplet or something. So you can do all kinds of interesting stuff with that. I like that. This would actually be kind of cool because then we can do this one like super roomy and then as soon as the sub comes in, we'll turn it off so it gets really dry. Uh, and, and intimate. So I'll, uh, this is also a really nice way to play with contrast in a track. Um, have very wet elements and then very dry elements close together. So especially when you're wearing headphones, that's gonna sound really cool and interesting because you're, you're like constantly moving from one space to another uh, and that, that sounds really nice. So for the second yoink, we can just use the same patch from the beginning, just duplicate that and delete the reverb for that. And now draw some quarter notes under the, that sounds cool when you play it sustained as well. Draw some quarter notes under the sub. But I want this sound to be different now. So we can go back into the serum patch and mess with it here. So let's see what we can do. Yeah, whatever I do right now, as you can tell, the sound stays pretty much exactly the same because of the frequency shifted sub. So that's a little bit annoying. So I'm gonna cut that off before the shift. Okay, and that's better. So let's make this a little longer. These MIDI notes can all be a little bit longer. So that's kind of nice, something like that. Just like a constant. yoink up there. Why is this clicking? Probably because of all of the, oh. Ah, there we go, because this was resetting back to zero. Ah, if we keep this on envelope mode, it stays up there, and that's actually kind of cool, I like this. Now we can like target a certain note, play with the detune to see how far it's supposed to spread. That actually has a cool tonality if we go towards that. Ooh, that's getting really metallic and aggressive, but I like it. I have to uh, reduce the harshness afterwards with an EQ. I'm just gonna dip 3K. I only have laptop speakers right now, so I can't tell that much, but it'll be fine. Um, also, at this point, we can layer this with like something with a similar, uh, that has like a similar job uh, from previously made samples. So I have like all these, all these samples I made uh, a long time ago, like on tour, I'll just name them from in like whatever city I made them in. And I've got a few in there that are like, have this kind of yoinky purpose. There we go. These are all like different, differently long held notes. So I can just take that second one is kind of cool. So we can just take that and layer it under all of these. This one has sub though, so we gotta cut that. 
So now that just increases the density of that yoink. We could even give one of them a reverb or let's frequency shift this one too. Until they're like somewhere around the same flavor. This one is still a little too aggressive for my taste. I think it was the comms filter. That's a bit better. Yeah, it's the re it's the delayed thing now too. Let's make this EQ a little shorter so it's more snappy. I do like the metallic tail, that's cool. We could even bring that out with the feedback knob here, that's kind of cool. Dun, 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 dun. Now we can like change the speed of that, maybe for a cool pattern or something. Um, let's see, so we've got... <laughs> Okay, so for the next bit, I just need this to hit a couple of times. So dun, 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 and then space, dun, 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 and the last two quarters are gonna be a fill again. The question is, should the sub stop at any moment? Yeah, probably right there, and then come back on that kick. Hey, stay where you are. And then that's where the fill is going to be, so the sub can stop again. Also, this kind of sounds a bit like ass right now because there's zero side chaining happening. So I'm going to add this just by copying the MIDI of the drums down here and then moving the snare to C. So that's cool. This is all very dry still, so let's add some things. Let's add some hi-hats and cymbals up here. Got some favorites. Uh, we have some open symbols in the pack too, like some good close and open one shots. Let's actually have a look at that. And some top loops too. Hey, we can just drag those in. Cause I don't wanna get hung up on creating a top loop every time. So uh, I made some top loops for people like us who don't wanna waste their time making top loops. That one's a bit intense. There's more simple ones in here too, just like just so you have something in the background to fill stuff up. And then you can still layer on that, just so there's something going on. So I'm just gonna use, I'm actually just gonna use a re-pitch again, so it'll only go up and pitch, but now it's on the right BPM, so. Also, I don't want this to start until after the fill. What else do we have in here? We've got some, we've got some cymbal splashes, that's cool. Those can come in at some point. What else is there? Oh yeah, this one's pretty dressed because there's already like some offbeat chants going on in this, but maybe that's cool. And also I can show you a nice technique I use a lot right here. So once we have these background loops in here, I don't like it when hi-hats have long release or open hi-hats are sticking around for too long. So uh, a, in, an easy fix is just using the auto pan to shorten these. So I'm, I'm actually just gonna group both of these top loops to go into this little group and then into the side chain. So now I'm just gonna put an auto pan on quarter or eighth notes on it so it'll change it from to like more cut off, or maybe even on eighth notes, so it's more, more choppy. I think eighth notes is the way. And then have a very ticky trap hi-hat um, be eighth notes as well in the background. So let me find one real quick. Uh, this one I like. And then we can, so we'll draw this one in ourselves, and then we can use it for some hi-hat fills. So right here, so let's just do some 32 notes. Nice, so that's making the drums already a little more interesting. Maybe cut off some low end on these background loops. Nice, so we've got that going. Now, I don't like the snare yet, because that's it's really tiny. It's probably just gotta be a little louder. I like the company snare, 
but maybe we can get it to be a little more intense. So here I want to like go into the realm of, hey, we're using someone else's samples, but we're making them our own. So his snare has got a little bit of low end, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Then there's this fundamental down here that I like a lot. So I'm gonna accentuate that, saturate the snare till it is literally on fire. Something like that. Put an EQ after the saturator again. Cut off the low end that is now new in this. So, and now since we've saturated this a lot, this is a pretty bricky snare now. The transient is pretty much gone and uh, the dynamics are missing. So we can either cut the sample off before a little bit so it has a little bit of a fast fade out and the tail doesn't get blown up that much. Or, or even in addition to this, we can use a transient shaper afterwards to get the snap back a little bit. So I'm gonna turn on the attack, turn down the sustain. This actually sounds kind of nice. I like this. I hope this sounds fine on real speakers. But yeah, this has a lot more impact now. I like that. It is not in tune with the song because our sub. Mm, this is an E and the snare is a, I think an F. Da, da. Oh, it's a, it's a C, but it needs to be a B. So I want to tune the snare to either be on the fundamental, like on the root note of the track, or the fifth. Right now it's playing hmm, when it should be playing hmm. So it's a fifth on top of an E. Oh, I can't go that low. So I'm gonna just pitch the thing down one semitone. That's all I'm trying to say. That fits way more. Gotta move my EQ point though. Don't forget that. Try to mm, nail it. There it is. Oh, we could even keep it like this. <laughs> For like maximum ploink. Okay, one more cool technique to make this snare really interesting. Once you have this, and you have like a matte snare with some cool resonance, try, actually, this thing, is it too sharp? Let me put an M Pro MB on this and then attenuate the highs a bit. Just a bit. Just a tiny bit, because yeah, this is a lot of, lot of, lot of meep. But so a cool thing you can do, once you have a snare like this, we're gonna duplicate this thing, like the entire group in here. So this is gonna play twice. Duplicate the whole shebang with the effects train and then run it through a hundred percent reverb But really short Kind of like that and now you can either pitch the sample uh, or frequency shift it before it goes into the reverb So now it's like So now you have a tuned reverb tail that is in key with the track, so now it's playing a major third. So that's kind of cool. You can even delay it with a pre-delay if you want to. So it's a little, little later. Oh, that's actually kind of cool. It's, it's getting into the Jack Yui kind of vibe with the, with the delayed bit. That's kind of interesting. That's kind of cool. I've never done that. Happy accidents. That's cool. This is a little too long, but... That's cool. I'll keep it like that. That's, this is nice. Maybe I have this clap in here. This is just to like add some more detail to the top end again because we distorted it so much. The whole top end is just white noise at this point, I feel like. So that can make it a little more interesting. Maybe cut the lows on that. Okay, I really don't like this intro sound yet though. Da, da, da. So that was just supposed to be like a white noise kind of. 
a nice little white noise sound, but it's not doing what I... That's better. That's more what I thought of. Why is there all this low end? Where is that coming from? That's better. Um, we could even layer some, let's take some horns, the cymatics horns, because we're, because we're here, because tis the occasion. Where do I usually take them from? The savage drums for trap, yeah, the brass, brass one shots. So, we're in E, so let's take some E horns, and then since we have these three hits, we can just make him go da 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 like E F E or something in the beginning here. So that would be cool. Um, let me just try that. Yeah, kind of like that. Let me add some fades. That's a little fast. Yeah, kind of like that. Now this needs to be EQ'd though, because this is very boomy. Something like that. Yeah, that works. Maybe even give them all individual fades just a little bit so it's a tiny bit tighter. If you want to. Yeah, I like that. And also, I like to layer it at least like two or three horn stabs just to make them a little denser. So this one is very dirty sounding and I like the release, but I need one more that has a crunchy attack. Like that. This one's even a little more aggressive, I like that. But there's a little bit of a fade in. So I'm gonna cut it until it's like somewhere right here, a little earlier. Yeah, there we go. Okay, add you in here as well. Nice, apply fades. Mm, I feel like this sub is drifting a little much still. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's fine. Maybe give it a little bit of this low end over here back. Me, that's kind of fine. We can even give this some modulation, like thinking of the self-checkout tune. We could add the white noise in Serum in here and then give this a faster LFO. So we have this meh, 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 kind of modulation in there on top of the quarter notes. So again, it's like different patterns at different speeds running at the same time. That's kind of cool. Uh, keeps this interesting. Um, also, I wanted to have one cool layer for this. Whoops, that is too much noise. Where did that come from? There we go. I wanted to have one cool layer for this bass where I take a, let's take like a vocal sample that just sings one single note. Technically that works, but I, wa I want something with a little more uh, fidelity. Let's do the ooh. So I want to tune this with a frequency shifter to be a layer on the sub. Mm, so first of all, tune it to an E. Now it's an E. Uh, add OTT. But now frequency shift this thing so it starts to sound all weird. But still kind of in key. So you got to target it's fundamental to be somewhere in the scale. Mm, so that would be a minor seven. Or up here would be an octave. That's kind of cool. Um, so I'm just gonna loop this little bit here of it. Whenever the sub is playing and to give it a bit of a rhythm, put an auto pan on it and have it wobble at like eighth notes or something. So it'll sound like. Maybe, oh, that's cool, I like that more. That's like a cool way to give the sub a layer that's kind of, could be sustained as well, or could, uh, I just wanna try out a few different pitches here. Or try out some uh, different modulation shapes, like instead of a sign, have a, have a saw down so it's, 
or plucky or kind of like that. But yeah, I just I just like layering buzzy basses with something melodic on top, but not too melodic. Use the frequency shifter to make it kind of weird. It's almost like a more like a background ambience kind of thing. I like it. This can definitely stay there. Okay, some bass fill, like a little glitchy thing for under this drum fill. Ooh, this is nice. From earlier sound design sessions. Maybe let's try this ending bit because that looks interesting. Ooh. That's cool. So maybe, cause this, all of these are like super random sounding. They're just like all over the place. Not sung to a specific tempo or anything. So I'll just drop them in, move them around until they somewhat fit. And then after I found like a place where they sound cool, go in and move them around like, or stretch them and warp them so that they actually like are on the, on the grid. <laughs> So that's actually kind of cool in the end there. So let's micromanage this real quick. So we can see there's another hit back here. So I'm gonna move this forward. So now we've got. Sweet, fade it in, because there's a little bit of a click. Sweet, some offbeat haze. Because why not? Where are the haze? Come on. Hey! The wobble sun. Hey! These are fine. Hey! Something I like to do is just if you pitch them up, hey! they become faster too. Hey! So they automatically sound a little bit tighter. Hey! So sometimes I don't even use the warp, or in this case, I would even use it to make it faster. So let's put these on the offs just because, oops, there we go. Oops, that's a little, little too many, you go here, you go here. <laughs> I like this guy, but it still sounds a little boring. I think we can make this more interesting. I wanna see where I can take this. Let's. Try something out. Distort this a little more. Make it a little softer on the top. And how can we get this guy, maybe even and duplicate this thing, so. Because I think it was just, it needed more saturation. We could even give this some delay, like left and right delay for room. So now it's like actually more like a background ARP kind of thing. I think this can still be pitched higher too. Ooh, there we go. Now it's almost like a little melodic element again, and we can automate this little fine tune here, so it has a bit of a na 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 line. So now, even higher. Sounds like some like Arabian kind of vocal. A little too high at the end there. That's cool, I like that. That's kind of, now it has, now it has a lot more of a vibe. I like that a lot. Sweet, okay. Those horns are too loud. Let's do some quick mixing. And can I get these to be a little lower? These could also, these, these are enough. They don't need the layer. Sometimes it's about reducing.
Ooh, I'm starting to like this. Ooh, okay, tonal delay sounds nice, it's just at the wrong pitch. That's kind of cool, let's keep that. Nah, you stay right there. We can even use the built-in modulation on the frequency shifter on like, what is it, eighth notes? No, we're doing quarter notes to like accentuate the upwards movement. That's kind of nice. Or do the telephone thing where it's like a square wave modulation and it's like going up and down like that. But yeah, that's a lot more like self-checkout. Oh. That's fine. And now we need one last fill at the end of this. Dun 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 dun. Something that goes mm 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 mm, but is also a heavy bass noise. That kind of does something like that. But maybe just with a pitch bend on, like tune automation on this. So let's link LFO one master tune. Da 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 da. Very Benny Benassi satisfaction style. One, two, three, four. That's almost enough. It's like a very OSCE thing, keeping it dry and uh, minimalistic for some fills. Let's add a fat rack and a vocoder just to the saw wave. Yeah, that's enough. Somehow reminds me of the old snails intros of like tunes like Stomp or something that would just go like, where is it? Da, da. Yeah, this is like, this basically sounds like the patch from the intro to Stomp when it just goes. <laughs> nice. And now we needed a different fill, so I wouldn't just loop this, so that we'd have kind of like A, like that's A, and then this is B. And then you need like C as the next fill, and then go back to B for like a cool call and response thing. So that's nice. Um, yeah, this is pretty sick. Uh, I like where this is going. We can add some additional snares real quick, some like small snares for fills. Are there no small snares in this world? Something like that, just for in between of here. Or maybe like that. All right, let's make a quick build up to this because I've been getting too lost in little details already. This wasn't very efficient. So I have this little loop I made a while ago. Already at the right tempo, just not the right pitch. Ooh, this is nice. This is giving this a lot more vibe now. I wonder if we can have this playing in the back. Like if we have this in the intro slash build up, that's really cool for giving it a vibe. So we'll have like eight bars of this. 
maybe with some constant horn stabs every once in a while just because. So it's just like. Oh, those are too short. I'd, I'd have to stretch them out a bit. Oh, we can just pitch them down an octave. And then again. Can we layer them with the other ones? If those are also down an octave, is that gonna sound okay? Let's see. Yeah, these works, but they need some, um, they need some reverb to be bigger, long reverb. There we go. Yeah, that's cool. And then automate this to definitely not be on during the job. We could tease the na 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 in the intro already. But of course, filter it a bit. So it's not giving everything away. Even more. And then start a build up from here or something. This is just gonna be like quick and easy build up making. Maybe this snare and then start pitching it up. So this snare is just gonna start here. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, dun, 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 Can I have this? Have this go up in pitch and then. Yeah, like that. Have this thing start looping and get faster and faster, then consolidate, or yeah, the whole thing, and use Complex Pro to pitch it up over time. Now use the washout rack of your choosing to wash this out over time. Make sure it stops at the end and doesn't reverb into the drop. And, and I have this little collection of my favorite risers and fall downs. We can also use some from my old sample pack. But I just have like a few favorites from all kinds of packs that I collected in this little folder here just for occasions like this where I just want to like drag something in real quick. This one's really nice too because it's so long and sustained. We could even make that one more interesting by adding an auto pan, so there's a little bit of rhythm to this. Me, 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 me. Okay, uh, automate the auto pan to go faster. And in time with the snare. Wah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Oh wow, <laughs> that was still the riser. That was kind of cool. The filter needs to go off of this. Automate that. No, automate you. Da -da -da -da. This could be even more aggressive and distorted for the drop. So I'm just gonna duplicate this. This is gonna be the intro track and then this is gonna be the drop track. So now I can mess with the effects on this without destroying the whole thing for the intro. 
So on the saturator, we could use the depth and color to maybe accentuate that bit a little more. Can this go down an octave? Ooh, that's kind of cool. Nice. That is very haunting. I like this. It's almost too wet, so maybe we can cut down on the delay in the end. Meh, 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 meh. That's kind of cool. This guy is still a little, little simple. Maybe we can we can make that patch something cooler. So let's do like a. Little squarified wave table, old trusty. Something going through the wave table, but so if there's one LFO doing the volume, like wah, 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 I want a different LFO at different speeds, maybe sweeping through the wave table so every wob is a little different, so it'll go or something. So that's kind of nice to give it a little more motion. That's mm. uh. Okay, and add some hyper detune. This is also really good for width without compromising your mid signal too much. Oh, there's a little stop in the wavetable that actually adds one more accent, like the little dirt petite. That's cool. Can we FM from B? Should we FM from B? We should always FM from B. Let's do that. That was cool. Ouch, but kind of a nice ouch. <laughs> very, very classic noise. Okay, add a filter. Nice. This reminds me of old times. Get this a little more interesting sounding with a, where are you, with a disperser. Very nice and lasery. And now a good way against like just the standard FME sound is to, again, frequency shift, but now this, pace, this patch has a sub. So I want to, wait, I'm gonna save this in case this crashes. <laughs> because some of these racks just do that sometimes. So I'm going to load a frequency shifter that uh, leaves the sub alone. So it's only shifting everything above 200 hertz. So, so I can move all the other stuff and like change the flavor of the sound a little bit without messing everything else up. So I can make it lower than it actually is. It's almost like a form and shift sort of, but for a bass noise. That's what I that's why I like it a lot. That's nice. That is very vocally sounding now. We could even use a little phaser. To increase the vowel sound. That's nice. This is probably really harsh sounding. It sounds like there's some wrong frequencies in here. Let's look at the spectrum. This just sounds a little messy overall, so I'm gonna take this bit out. And some 3K, just for cleanliness. Nice. I still don't know if I like the main the main whiny sound, but it's a it's a start of an idea. You could also you could also have a synth patch, maybe try to play that with a high saw or something, and then put some reverb on it so it has this kind of atmospheric feel. Very ghosty. I don't know if I would even want this to be stereo, maybe make this more mono or something. But yeah, that's that's a start. Actually, actually, yeah, that sounds nice. That sounds better. I'm really happy with the snare. That sounds really cool. I like that. 
So yeah, this is something like yeah, this could be a start of a really of a really cool track. Find a cool, find a cool pre-drop sample here, and then extrapolate from here. So I hope you learned something from like all the different techniques I was trying to show you here and little tricks and tips for like interesting sound design, like how to make a funny funny snare with a cool layer or how to like add a trappy sub to these or how to layer your yoinks and stuff. So um, yeah, I hope you learned something from this. This was fun. See you next time.